Six people from the same family, including three children, were killed on the Delhi Meerut Expressway in Ghaziabad when a speeding bus driving on the wrong side collided head-on with an SUV, resulting in the tragic loss of six lives and leaving two others injured. The victims, including 80-year-old Vanshika, 14-year-old Himanshu, and 16-year-old Dipanshu. The bus driver who was arrested had on-school duty markings on the bus despite using it to transport private company staff. He recklessly drove on the wrong side of the National Expressway for 7 kilometers, flouting many laws and showing complete disregard for the lives of others. This tragic incident in Ghaziabad serves as a grim reminder of the grave problems associated with the wrong side driving and the devastating consequences it can have, posing a significant threat to other road users. Such incidents call for heightened awareness, stringent enforcement of laws and collective efforts to discourage this dangerous behavior. Only through a shared commitment from all stakeholders can we hope to curb the alarming rates of crashes and create safer roads for everyone. Welcome to Milestones, the Save Life podcast, a show where we discuss various aspects of road safety with the aim of ultimately working towards safer roads and a safer India. I'm your host, Karthik Nagaraji. And today, we're having this conversation in two parts. For the initial conversation, we're joined on the show by Mr. Sanket Bonve. Mr. Sanket Bonve is a 2007 batch IAS officer from the MP Kader and has worked as PS to Sri Nitin Gadkari, facilitating the minister's vision on road safety. He played a crucial role in achieving key milestones, notably the passage of the Motor Vehicles Amendment Act of 2019. Mr. Bondwe, welcome to the show. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. So I wanted to start, you know, from a larger perspective and then, you know, go in uh, a little deeper. Um, how and why is road safety such a big problem in India? You, you know, in your language, in your understanding, what are the main risks contributing to this? See, mm, the incident you mentioned first is like, again, an eye-opener. Very unfortunate, very sad. Road safety, road accidents in India are really a very a big problem big problem if you see the numbers you know that almost 5 lakh crashes take place every year we are sitting and doing this podcast and if every minute there are more than 100 accidents happening and unfortunately some people are losing their life 1.5 lakh the data says the 1.5 lakh fatalities every year the, this is a very alarming figure so this is something which we all know. We are working on that. Now coming to the factors, the risk. I personally feel that the human, the human error is the major one. I think more than 90% of the accidents are due to the behavioral issue of the human beings. Then I can again add that over speeding. Over speeding again is one of the biggest factor for the road accidents. Apart from that, there are like issues with sometimes a vehicle, the brake doesn't work, there's the engine problem, there is some fault with the vehicle, also some infrastructure issues like there are black spots and uh, there is some bridge where there are six lane road and it comes to the four lane. So, yeah. but these three factors are important. And in India, you will like to know that the GDP loss, Karthik, is like more than 3%. If wow. we count this demographic loss, the GDP loss, so something I think our government is always doing, we are doing, we will be doing. And these are some of the main basic issues. Hmm. You know, um, while, while the numbers are alarming, um, and and I would like to believe that um, every every year we sort of lose uh, as many people as there are population in some of the smaller countries. Like, um, 
but it's also you know in a way not surprising I mean, if you've spent enough time on the road especially the highways in india if you go back to the to the example we opened the episode with uh, this is something we've all seen we've all seen especially you know next to a petrol bunk or a rest area or so people drive aram se on the wrong way because it will save them 5 10 minutes or whatever right uh, so to me it's 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 not surprising per se but which is also why i feel you know the the law that you played a very important role in you know which is the motor vehicles amendment act of 2019 i feel is extraordinarily critical right because those are the kind of things which will have real impact on ground right from your point of view it's been almost 4 years since this act has come about what has been the the impact around it so first september 2019 the act was passed in parliament there is a very interesting story here uh i joined as a new ps to the minister in hmm. august and the parliament session was going on i was very fresh very new you know i just took over my charge and some few days into my work and then this bill came up so i can probably say that uh, when i joined and this bill bill was in discussion and i have heard all the uh, saying and the speeches regarding the support and the dissent and all that stuff but uh, yes the motor vehicle act came out with wonderful amendment karthik it is i will say the magna carta the magna carta mm. which have changed the landscape is changing the landscape and also it the landmark i will just uh, cite few examples one is like the license now there is lot of allegations like license to milta nahi hai and license uh, is very tedious job to go to the rto get a do it app. so the learning license now you don't need to go and uh, just plead and convince i think the learning license have been made so easy because our government believes in the ease of doing ease of living the atmanirbhar bharat so the license process is streamlined and many of the states who have consented see all states are not there on board it is a federal type situation here where some states which are on board they are doing good and some states are uh, boarding some states are to board to so license process second i will say you will not believe what i said in the first uh, reply about the infrastructural defects and all so the contractor mm. can be penalized here if there is a defect in the road and someone loses his life it becomes a black spot so there is a provision where in motor vehicle even the contractor can be penalized so this is something new this is something really very good again i will say penalties yes the old british time penalties the fines were very minuscule so now we have mobile phones and even mobile phones uh, you must believe is one of the most important reason for accidents it's a part of human uh, behavior yeah. so yeah. we increase the fines related to mobile phone wearing seat belt helmets and all that again a classic example is a good samaritan hmm. a good samaritan is that person who really help aisa nahi tha dekho pehle bhi log help karte the even today hmm. people on their own try to help i have seen hmm. many i myself uh, try to help one or two people in the road injuries and all that but not fatal so there are good people and we should support them so good samaritan law is again i will say a good part which is coming up and then again see india is a diverse country a big country so states can frame their own rules now this is something customization like a state like goa you can't compare with a state with nagaland in northeast in the himalayan region so somewhere the states have the flexibility but i will say that uh, the motor vehicle act with its amendments is doing very good hmm. and lot of change i will say see the vehicles are increasing day by day you Correct. may tell me you may ask me ki sir to graph to bad raha accident ka but if you proportionately see the number of vehicles increasing the number of facilities the number of roads highways green highways increasing so i am not arguing this but i am saying that yes the accidents now uh, i think will take some inflection point somewhere so a lot of things we are doing but yes we need to do a lot both as a user and as well as someone who's been monitoring this space closely i feel the electronic monitoring uh, has been a very very important uh, piece right it, it's it's very visible people can see it i have seen you know cab drivers slow down whenever they are passing a cctv camera and all of that uh, what has been the impact of that in bringing down 
uh, you know the number of crashes overall technology have made a huge impact in enforcement i will say everywhere again i will say in emergency you can see the apps or the ambulance reaching on time with the help of intelligent transport system the enforcement part yes the cameras the cameras are such good so you, now you can even see a person sitting in a car if he has wore a seat belt or not do you know so the resolution and the cameras like the automatic number plate recognition the cameras try to recognize the numbers even the normal numbers on the number plate which are dirty soiled and all so the technology really really they say that in every 18 months the technology doubles more is laws and all that technology is at help everywhere i will give one more example in the highways we have the intelligent transportation system so i was in sona now sona is an uh, control hub to monitor the delhi mumbai greenfield expressway the 1300 kilometers greenfield expressway so sona is the main control room it, uh, there are some control room in dosa in udaipur in gujarat in mumbai and there are small control room but sona being the start is the big control room so i was given a presentation and i was shown a whole uh, spectrum of how a control room with the help of electronics and a technology operate i will not believe that uh, there was one small accident there i will not say it was an accident but a box fell a box fell from a truck on the road on a by lane and then it was caught by the camera and the signal the team was sitting and the signal went to the person the person called the petrol vehicle the petrol vehicle may have taken 5 10 minutes i will not lie but it took some time but it reached and the box was standing uh coincidentally when the driver was drawing the luggage car it it parked aside and it, they knew that some boxes so now this is called incident management system now there is a small incident it may not be a crash but see a box fell from a truck on a road imagine if a car is coming or somebody is coming or two wheelers are banned so i will not mention that example at two wheeler wala aa raha hai but a car is coming and it will bang on the box so something can happen So this is technology, but now even today there is a digital divide. There is a bridge. We need to cover it up, and I think with times uh, we will be able to cope up with this. Very very happy to hear that uh, someone like you who's seeing this on ground and shaping you know the way this is happening. When you are hopeful, you know I think everyone listening you know to this will will be hopeful. Uh, one of the things we are also trying to achieve through this podcast right, is. Uh, uh and i want to end this conversation exactly with this question which is it is also what uh, people should understand that it is not just the role of lawmakers like you right um we spoke about enforcement a lot but uh, people should should understand what is their role in 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 contributing to a safer road because it's not just about them it's about them it's about other people even if you're not making the mistake today you know you can be at risk right Uh, so through this medium what would you like to tell someone who is listening to this in terms of how he or she you know uh, can contribute to a safer road today the i have five words mantra or a message i always say this life is precious drive safe the road users first of all they should respect the pedestrian the one walking on the road should be respected the first right go to the one who walks on the road it is a it may be on the footpath it may be crossing the road he is a pedestrian we should have uh, respect for that and in foreign countries you go to sydney you go abroad you see that they just stop this is something we should start on this can be the starting point it is a small step but they but they say the small is beautiful small is big so this is something we should start from again drinking and driving now alcohol now everybody we don't need to discuss on that but it is proved and all that so drinking driving again it comes into the human behavior but it is something which should be avoided and the youth which go maybe they are going for a party so the, they should they should take a driver with them or one of the guy of the friend there are four friends so one should really really stick to the norms that they are sticking to the rules and there are many such small small you know things like wrong lane driving 
and uh, many such. So I think even helmets. See, uh, I was telling my example. Even you are speeding for like you are on 60 or 70 kilometers per hour on a bike. That's fine. That's fine. We are going and there is nobody. But if you don't wear a helmet, anything can happen. And see, uh, it's not just about one thing. It's a collective effort. Everybody, every stakeholder, the automobile companies, the the NGOs who are working, I will say the Save Life Foundation is doing a fantastic work. I, so I feel that somewhere we need to come. And again, I will say that life is precious. Please drive safe. Great. Very, very impactful words, sir. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I like especially what you said about uh, small is big. Right. And so listening to this, even if you can start with that one thing, which is uh, make sure you're wearing the helmet. It's not just your life is not just important to you. It's, it's also, you know, who you're going to leave behind if something happens, right? And and stopping, you know, with, with pedestrians, uh, um, you could save so much just by doing that. So uh, if you're listening to this, I guess my my takeaway from this conversation is that there's a lot more you can do than you think, right? To to improve uh, safety on the roads. Uh, sir, thank you so much. Uh, not only for this conversation, but the extraordinary work that you're doing, you know, in keeping all of uh, us safe. Thank you so much for taking time off. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Save Life Foundation. Thank you so much. Experts say that the presence of deterrence directly results in reducing crashes. According to research into the role of punishment in creating deterrence, the certainty of being caught is far more powerful as a deterrent than the punishment itself. People, it is believed, commit crimes or violations in this case based on the likelihood of being caught rather than the severity of the punishment. A strong deterrent like the certainty of being caught may therefore reduce road violations more effectively than increasing the severity quotient of chalans. On that note, our second guest today is Mr. Raveen Mirchandani. Mr. Raveen Mirchandani is a business leader with extensive experience in technology geared towards ensuring road safety, among other things. He currently serves as the chairman of ADOR, India's largest provider of traffic safety and enforcement solutions. So, Mirchandani, welcome to the show. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It's a privilege. Thank you so much. It's a privilege for us to have you on the show, uh, given your extraordinary track record of, of impacting this particular area. Uh, you know, I wanted to start at a, at a generic level. You know, you you heard uh, the introduction that I made on deterrent and punishments. Um, in your opinion, what is the role of traffic enforcement in saving lives, sir? Today, technology can be passively existing on a high-speed road to identify many things. You can identify whether people are speeding, wearing seatbelts, distracted by using their mobile phone, uh, perhaps inebriated with alcohol because of the way the car is moving in the lane, um, or whether they're prone to have some other sorts of accidents based on where they're parked uh, or driving on the wrong side of the road. So technology can identify all of these things. If you're using an international grade technology, you're likely to get evidence that will stand up in court as well. What does that mean? It means that the megapixels that are available in that image have enough scene context for the person who is infringing, for example, not to be able to claim it wasn't me or that number plate wasn't me or I was in a different location because your scene context is so clear. You, you almost, in most instances, even have the face um, so that people cannot deny that it was them speeding. So if you have the right quality technology, enforcement uh, is significantly assisted by uh, passive technology sitting on the side of the road. However, I want to keep stressing that is useless unless you have enabling legislation that creates enough punitive damage at the back end of that infringement to change the behavior of the driver. Why is that not working in India today? A lot of people say nothing is changing. You've got enforcement technology. Yeah, because a speeding ticket is a thousand rupees. And a thousand rupees for most people is a premium to pay on that expressway because they need to get someone somewhere fast. You know, I've I've had many discussions with many people who pay thirty thousand rupees a month as speeding fines, but wow. for them it's a speeding premium. They for them it's just a speeding premium. If they lost their license for two years, that would change driver behavior very very rapidly. That, that's some stunning data. In your opinion, um, what are some of the the low cost tech solutions which can help scaling of what we're talking about because I, we've often seen that uh, you know the investment and the budgets often become deterrents which sort of slow down adoption right 
Uh, what are some of, what are some of the solves to this from a from a slightly lower tech perspective? Um, I'll come at this from a different angle uh, because what is the what is the cost of a life, right? Uh, is a twenty five thousand or a twenty five lakh camera for speeding too expensive? And if it saved a hundred lives, you know how do you how do you talk budget versus life? I think that the conversation needs to change a little bit, not around the cost. Uh, but around the impact, right? Yes, there's a you know there's a, lots of imported equipment available at a tenth of the cost and a tenth of the megapixel as well, um, which is available and you know it uh, technically does the same thing, gives you an infringement notice and you know, it takes your number plate and um, will it stand up in court? Probably not. Uh, will you have the appropriate scene context? Probably not. Does it matter? In some instances, no, because if people are going to pay their fines anyway. Uh, and not contest it, it doesn't matter. But as people start to get 40 or 50,000 rupees in fines and their cars are impounded by the police, then they start contesting them. Today, those contests come from, you know, people phoning politicians, people going on social media to embarrass uh, the, you know, the, the enforcement technology company. But that eventually will change to people wanting to contest whether the technology used is right. So it, it, it's a cost versus benefit question first. Secondly, the average speed enforcement location when you consider everything right the pole the camera the the server the communications network is somewhere between 20 to 25 lakhs a location right um most of these speed cameras pay themselves off in three months so um the problem is you have the exchequer taking the the infringement fines, so the you know the treasury of the state gets that thousand rupees per infringement, but it's the police budget or somebody else's budget that is spent on putting in the technology. So there is never a discussion between departments wow. on what is budget versus value. So when we talk to the police, they're like, "My God, it's so much money!" And then the exchequer is out there. We've given them big, uh, you know, information on how much money is being made from these cameras that paid themselves, you know, almost four or five times over within the first year. Wouldn't you do more of this to change driver behavior? But there, that conversation is not happening. So we have this systemic issue at many levels. It's not a budget issue. This, you know, we can afford, we can afford the best technology in India if we want to change driver behavior. It's a will issue. And it's a communication issue. So uh, we need to understand it from the whole of life cycle uh, to be able to determine the answer to your question. Is, is there a cheaper way to do this? Or is, that, is, is there the best way to do this? You know, I come from the world of advertising. right? And in the last five years, um, our business has been extraordinarily revolutionized by technology. right? Uh, a lot of it has to do with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And I see this in various aspects, you know, whether it is food, or whether it is communications, et cetera. Right? As far as traffic management is concerned, right? Like that classical imagery of uh, the traffic constable on the road operating the uh, you know the lights and catching them for not wearing helmets, et cetera. To me, it seems like not very different from how it was when I was riding my bike to college, right? Uh, but I know that uh, uh, you know, like I said earlier in the show, you're part of evangelizing technology in this space. In your opinion, what is then the interplay between the on-ground, you know, law enforcement people and the tech that you're giving them to to help scale and make their lives better? I guess you know, there's many ways to answer that question. The, the first one is, what is the technology on the roadside in a city? It's very different from a highway, you know, because highway you're you're catching vehicles at speed, you're getting very different sorts of behavior and very different sorts of risks. At a city intersection, you've got uh, people breaking red lights, you've got people without uh, helmets. Um, you've got people crossing the stop sign. You've got jaywalking. You know all sorts of all sorts of other behavior that's happening, which is quite difficult, in fact, for technology to capture. There's tons of websites that will tell you they can capture helmet uh, violations, and in fact, you'll get up to fifty to sixty percent because it gets really hard beyond that to get again. You know, a, a evidence that is admissible in court. You know, I, I, I want to make that clear. Any any evidence that you get from technology should be admissible in court. It shouldn't be just I have a photograph and a human can tell you it's a helmet or not. It must be something completely automated. So there's a lot of technology today that does that kind of up to the 50 to 60 percent mark. Uh, it's very difficult to do red light violation when the the re, the line that you violate isn't clearly marked. How do you, you know, you've got to be in the middle of the intersection before you can get a red light violation. Whilst in the UK or the US, you know, you cross that stop line and that's that's a that's a violation. 
Um, today, you'll find that in many places, the only way that uh, speed enforcement or any enforcement fines are collected are, in fact, at these red lights where policemen are walking around with little pads and in inputting your car number plate or motorcycle number plate. And then that queries the database of either the state or the, or the national database. And it comes up with all these infringement notices against you that they make you pay. Um, so their job in many ways is to become the, the driver behavior change agent because they are using technology in a, in a very Indian way because there's no way to get to you uh, with the infringement notice, because you know people will pile up 10, 20 notices and not pay. You know how do you, how do you how do you go behind them? It is it is really these policemen on the side of the road that are that are enforcing it. Um, since we're talking about you know the the on ground personal working in tandem with tech, I also wanted to understand from you. You know this is just for the for the listeners' benefit, right? Uh, I think what we say in terms of immediate traffic violations, in terms of speed and crossing the lines, is fairly very clear. But uh, can today the tech also be used to ensure against, say, some sort of be behavioral issues, right? Like distracted driving, uh, or even for in that matter, not wearing seat belts, uh, not having child restraint systems. How, how evolved is the tech? So, a very good question. And in fact, Save Life has implemented on the Mumbai Pune Expressway uh, distracted driving technology. Uh, whilst entering, uh, while, while centering the main tunnel, there has been running for three years now. Um, this is an Australian technology from AccuCensus in Australia. Uh, it's used widely across every state in Australia um, uh, to influence driver behavior change. And it identifies people who might be using their mobile phone while driving or not wearing the seatbelt while driving. Um, what have we found? So the Mumbai Pune Expressway has 75,000 movements a day on average in each direction. So 150,000 movements a day, quite standard for any busy arterial road, for example, in Sydney as well. Uh, and we found that 2.7% of people are distracted when they're driving. Uh, what is the number in Australia? About the same. What is the number in the UK? About the same. 2.7% of people will use their mobile phone texting when they're driving, right? So this is completely distracted from the road. This is worse than being alcohol in inebriation impacted, right? Because uh, one millisecond of distraction and something changes ahead of you and a lot of people are dying. What we see different in India, though, is that, for example, 27% uh, of front seat passengers don't wear seatbelts, and over 12.5% of drivers don't wear seatbelts on expressways. So these are at speeds above 100, right? Um, and uh, the other thing we see in India that's different is that 5% of the violators are extreme violators, again, because you have no punitive uh, demerit points in India. So 5% of the violators could be a bus driver of a state transport road corporation driving at 90 kilometers an hour um, and using a mobile phone with both hands whilst entering a tunnel. Um, that's criminal behavior because you'll kill not just yourself, but probably 60 passengers on the bus because of what you're doing, right? Um, we see cars sometimes at 190 kilometers an hour, right? Uh, now in the US, UK, Canada, Australia, in most parts of Germany, even outside of the uh, non-speed limited autobahns, you'd lose your license. If the speed limit is 100 and you're at 190, you're done. You won't have your license for three years. Or in fact, in some states, it's a criminal offense because you're way above the safe limit. You're now, you're now a criminal because you're, you're a danger to yourself and everybody else around you. Um, so that kind of behavior we see in India is, again, not because the technology is good at picking it up. The technology is identical to everywhere in the world. The reason we're seeing this behavior is because we have no way to stop it, even after the technology picks it up. There is no punitive uh, restraint from enabling legislation that comes after that. So there is no way to identify a speeding fine for being six kilometers over and a speeding fine for being you know, 100 kilometers over, and no other uh, criminal or police related enforcement that comes from you know two very different behaviors you know at, at 6 kilometers an hour over or if you're driving at 100 600 7 you could be just lazy uh, distracted bored you know a little bit sleepy maybe or just not watching whilst you're talking but 190 you're willfully doing some damage yes, again sir, these these numbers are so so hard hitting you know, 27% of uh, people not wearing front passenger seat, but that's almost one in every three people not wearing it. It's, it's atrocious. It's one uh, in three people. Now, we don't look at the back seat. You might find even more. Yeah, you might find yeah, even, even yeah. more. Uh, you know, 20 years or what, 25 years after Princess Diana's death, you might find that that behavior has not changed at high speeds. Yeah. Um, you know, in your opinion, 
what are the things that anyone who is listening to the show as a citizen can do how can they play their part to join forces you know with traffic enforcement officials and also people who are creating technology like you what is what is their part and how can they do it better oh that's a that's a hard answer because you'll find that behavior changes in india in different parts of india right the behavior on expressways in north india is very different from behavior in expressways in tamil nadu so what can you do in these two locations is also very different um i think being a good citizen is important and if you see someone doing silly things on the road take a photograph right if you're driving don't take a photograph but get your passenger to take a photograph and and send that into the police put that up on 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 social media if you need to quite often it might be a goon so you don't want to do that because they'll come after you so that's what i mean by it depends on different parts of different parts of the country and 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 what social citizens citizens can do i'm a big fan of people posting when they see speed cameras uh, and warning everybody else that there's a speed camera there because the job of the speed camera isn't to infringe you the job of the speed camera is to calm the speeds on that stretch of road so the more people talk about the fact that there's a speed camera there the more people that will slow down there the less likely that that black spot is going to be dangerous to people who are driving because everyone suddenly come awake and become very vigilant on that stretch of road because there's a camera there that's going to cost them 1000 rupees so you know every time people talk about some sort of technology implemented somewhere post it tell everybody about it because the real job of changing that driver behavior is coming down to your publicizing it uh, than anybody else um and finally i'd say you know relentlessly keep petitioning your government to create enabling legislation to have punitive damages for silly behavior on the road not just fines and let's all uh, get on a advocacy message that eventually brings the politicians also to be sensitive to this is there something wrong with our politicians no they focused on the growth of this country and rightly so because you know we've taken this long to get here and this is our decade fantastic but every politician in every country is only going to be sensitive to what the people and of the electorate are sensitive to if the people of the electorate are sensitive to road safety they will be sensitive to road safety so it is our job to continue to bring this up as an advocacy message on every platform so that it becomes an electoral issue it can't be just about traffic jams it has to be about lives lost on the road as well thank you so much mr michandani for uh, taking out time and talking to us uh, this has been very insightful and we very much appreciate it thank you so much that brings us to the end of today's episode of milestones the save life podcast in this two part conversation we learned about the importance of enforcing the mvaa 2019 to enhance road safety in india the act brought rationalized penalties for traffic violations encouraging responsible driving additionally we delved into the significance of addressing risk factors such as drunk driving speeding and distracted driving through tech based enforcement which can significantly reduce road crashes we also explored the utilization of tech like small traffic cameras mobile apps for real time data and electronic monitoring systems to promptly identify offenders and high risk areas by combining these measures a safer road environment can be achieved reducing fatalities and fostering a more responsible drive driving culture in this country my name is kartik nagarajan if you have been tuning in and feel that road safety deserves way more attention than it gets please do consider sharing this episode with your family and friends do also review us on whichever podcast apps you are listening to us on if you are watching this on youtube do leave a comment to let us know what you would like to see us cover next For more on all things road safety please visit Save Life Foundation's website www.savelifefoundation.org or any of its social media pages on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you again next week. Bye. I V M